guys, what's up, it's James here on Jay's Earthbreaker. Today I'll be doing a gear and deck setup video you guys have been asking me to do on my uh, three legendaries that I have been recording on. My Myth, which isn't really legendary anymore, he's transcendent. Uh, my Balance, who is still level 67, and my Ice, level 66. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give what you guys are asking for a video so you guys have something to fall back on. If you want to make a level 60 Ice or level 60 Myth or even level 60 Balance, which is arguably, for some reason, the most OP of the classes. Um, and even at max, it's, it's uh, I guess, arguable. But really, fire is, uh, as of right now, with their high crit and pierce and stuff. But uh, getting into the decks, the uh, gear setup, I mean, we have the House of Scales headdress, which is farmed from the House of Scales. If you can't get this and your uh, hat luck is kind of bad, like me, uh, or like my luck is for hats anyways, or for gear in general, um, I suggest farming waterworks for the Hood of Judgment. Same with the robe, if you can't get the House of Scales Raymond by farming House of Scales, just go with the, uh, the Keeper of Judgment. Uh, the boots, I have level 66 crafted. This can be swapped out for Glen Demings if you're, not, if you're not going to level 66, or can be swapped out for uh, House of Scales boots, which give more block, I believe, than um, Waterworks, so they're really good, and they give more incoming than Waterworks. So, um, and I, th I think they give the, the same damage as Waterworks. I can't really compare right now because I don't have the... Um, the uh, level 60 waterworks boots for balance, but I'm pretty sure they have more block and the same amount of damage. But uh, for the uh, wand, I have the staff of the flashing blade, which is you know the best level 60 wand. Every every uh, legendary in their prime has to have it. Um, if you can't get the level 60 staff of the flashing blades, I would suggest crafting a wand in Celestia or buying a wand from the bazaar that has uh, maybe 20 block or higher. Those are really good um, and can get you started, so you don't get crit on. And um, it's pretty easy to get uh, up in rank and tickets from there uh, if you do tournaments or without tournaments, pretty much. Um, for the Athame, it's Duelist Fatal Razor. Every level 60 has to have this in their prime. Um, same with the Staff of the Flash and the uh, Duelist Daredevil Ring. But um, if you don't have this, you can always craft the Emerald Bear Claw. If you don't know how to craft this or don't know where to get it, um, you can look it up on the Wizard 101 Wiki. Or um, there's, I'm pretty sure there's, um, there's someone in the comments section that's you know willing. Uh, to tell you where it is, but if you don't know where it is and you know you use a little bit of common sense um, There is a guy in Vesterland uh, Who sits by a bridge and basically if you're a high enough crafting level you can craft the um, Or you can buy the uh, the recipe for this and a ring that he um, has if you, if you don't have the uh, The daredevil ring so and they both give really good in and out and decent damage um, There's Jordan Moonsword right there Deck set up. But uh yeah, if you don't have the ring in a theme, um or the yeah, the the ring in a theme, you can just craft the uh the emerald bear claw and the um the other ring that uh that he sells the recipe. I don't have it on right now, but I think I have it on my ice, so I'll show you guys in a minute. Um amulets, you can either run life mastery, myth mastery, um uh, Jewel of the Anubis Judgment, um, I don't really know where that come from, but there's one in Lower Zigzag that gives two damage, so if you want to run that, I guess you can have a little bit more damage, and it gives a blade. I wouldn't really suggest, I'd probably suggest a Mastery of some sort, or the Order of Misfortune, which is, you know, good too. It gives a Mana Burn card and that fresh reshuffle, so you don't have to put as much reshuffle in main deck, which I only have, I think, yeah, two of, and I don't, I don't really carry any inside, but, um, so yeah, Pet can vary. Um, mine is just straight up damage and resist. Um, pets don't really matter. Uh, you you can be good without a pet, or you can be you know even better with a pet. It doesn't really matter. Uh, strat is basically all it takes to be good in PvP. Um, your deck can be uh, the best level 60 deck in game are sold, or the best level 60 decks in game are sold in Stone Town. Um, they're fairly cheap for the most part. Some of them cost like I think like 15k. So just be sure to have like enough gold on you. Uh, to buy one, but I socketed mine with health, and I socketed my Athame and Ring, so. And then my uh, Necklace I socketed with Flat Resist, which also can come in handy. So that's deck. Um, here's the deck setup, the main deck setup, so if you want to pause here, uh, you can copy it. Um, one thing I would suggest, uh, definitely have Lore at level 60. Um, most of you won't have Savage Paw at level 60, so... What you want to do if you aren't going to make the extra stretch for the Amber to craft Savage, I would just take out the Savage and put in some Spectral Blast, which is really good at Legendary as well. If you critical, um, and if you have a, like a Blade on or an Infile and you hit Storm, it's really high damage, which you know does more than Lore Master, so it's like a thousand and five hundred maybe if you have good damage. My damage alone, 
uh, right now is level, or not level, but is uh, 89% or 98%. So, um, yeah, that's that. That's basically everything for the balance. Oh, yeah, and the TC setup. So, if you guys want to copy this, go ahead and pause. So, that's everything for balance. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my life. Not my life, but my ice. Alright guys, one thing I should say before I go into these stats and gear and deck setup on my ice is that my ice is not completed and um, his gear setup can be uh, bettered and probably will be bettered in the future, so just keep that in mind. But uh, getting into the setup, I'm running the level 66 crafted hat, which all this gear can pretty much be crafted by the uh, Lion and Zafario or the recipes can be purchased from him. So the crafted hat, level 66. Crafted uh, robe level 66, crafted boots level 66, and the reason why I have these instead of these 79 block ones is because of the extra resist to storm and fire, which are really OP at legendary. Uh, be the beacon of the Arun Veil, which um, can be you know swapped out for a uh, a crown shop wand, a crafted wand, or um, some wand with like 20 block or more. It's really good. Uh, the Athame I'm running is uh, craftable by the Lion and Zafaria. It is the Olefin Stored Scimitar. Really good for damage, block, power pip, and overall just like a really good Athame for level 66. Uh, with this, it's kind of arguable that with Ice, because you know no one really goes crit Ice at level 60, that you don't need the um, the Duelist Athame because it gives like crit and that's mainly why it's used. But uh, I socketed my accuracy on this and then outgoing jewel, so basically I have 26 plus heal on this, um, which is really, really good. So. Uh, if you're going level 66 ice, definitely craft the Olefin Story Skimitar. Uh, for the necklace, like I said before, or actually I didn't say before, I had to cut it out, but um, I was running Life Mastery on my uh, ice. I had to put it on my myth because I'm currently questing my myth and I need satyrs to heal. Um, the Winter Tusk Wing of Courage, this is the ring I was talking about on my balance that I, I didn't have on him. But uh, this can be crafted from the guy standing next to a bridge in Vesterland. Uh, the recipe is fairly cheap and the, the ingredients to get it are fairly cheap as well. I think it requires some red mandrake, but those are pretty fluent in the bazaar. And then some um, water lily, which I think are kind of hard to get. Uh, they're kind of expensive, but this ring is definitely worth it. Um, since ice is mostly a tanky heal class, you want to have that incoming and outgoing. As you can see on my ice, he has a lot of it. He has like 37 in, 17 out, so major tank. Um, and yeah, that's basically those stats. Pet is just, I mean, like I said before, pets can vary. Uh, it's just a damage or resist pet. Uh, socketed makes it uh, quad damage, double resist. And then um, this deck is bought again from Stone Town, the best level 60 decks in game that um, you don't really have to farm for. Uh, this is my deck setup, so you can copy it right here if you guys want to, um, you know, if you have a legendary ice of your own and you want to have a deck set up, this is really good. The only thing I would change on it. Maybe in the future is I would take out um, maybe a monstrous and put another winter moon. By the way, guys, if you're PvPing on a level 66 ice or a 60 ice in general, uh, or even a 50 ice, you want to have winter moon. It's a really good spell. You can combo into it. Uh, it's not like at max where you could winter moon in a weaver, but it's still like a really high damage spell since ice most of the time at legendary max, uh, magus even, have bubble control over the other uh, enemy. Because mostly you'll be facing like balances and stuff like that. And myths, I mean, myths can have bubble control, but um, ice, ice tends to pull more bubbles than myth most of the time. Even though um, myths can carry rat magician, but uh, I can tell you most of the time that if you're ice, you'll be having bubble control over the person you're facing. So, uh, and Winter Moon Enchanted does mass with bubbles. So if they don't have stun blocks, or, or even if they have stun blocks up, you can get them off or combo into the stun uh, with Winter Moon with that OP damage. Here's my TC deck setup. So you guys can pause the screen here if you guys want to copy it. And that's pretty much it for my ice. Your stats should look something like this or a little bit lower because most of you don't have my pet. Um, if you guys don't like the damage, the damage isn't supposed to be super high since ice is a bladey class. Meaning that um, you're supposed to blade up and then hit. So um, if your damage it comes out to like 43, that's not bad at all. It just means that you have to have bubble control most of the match, maybe an end follow on, and you have to have Winter Moon definitely to combo. And uh, your resist should be 40 or higher. So, 35 is good, but you want to maintain a good 40 resist. Accuracy is 14, it's not that bad, it'll get better when I get Staff of the Flash. Uh, you don't want to have that high a crit when you're in Ice, maybe when you're a low rank, because not many people you face have block. But uh, your block definitely needs to be on point as an ice, since ice is a tanky class. Power pit percentage is kind of bad as of right now because I don't um, have staff with flash. But when I get it, that'll go up. Healing in and out has to be boss. So 
Um, pretty solid stats on an ice, like I said before, damage doesn't really matter. Ice is a bladey class and a tank class, so you can make do with what you have. Just make sure you have a lot of bubbles in, copy my deck set up, and you'll be fine. And uh, get those ice birds in side deck too. Ice birds are like a godsend when pulled and needed. So like ice bird into like the Lord of Winter or ice bird into the Winter Moon does mass. So and this is my ice. Pretty solid stats as of right now. They'll get better, but I'm going to go ahead and get to you guys on my myth. All right, guys, here on my myth, James Storybreaker. We're in Zafaria because currently being quested to max so I can do some of that max speed for you guys and farm more Ganth and all that. Get Ami, get my uh, Hades robe, hopefully, and uh, start doing some max P for um, my myth. But um, as of right now, I'm level 70, currently in Drum Jungle. So if you guys want a, want a status update on that, that's where I am. But getting into the gear setup, we have the Helm of the Ravenous Teeth, which is a house, the House of Scales hat, the Ravenous Teeth garb, which is the House of Scales robe, and the Ice Crocs Heavy Waters, which um, is level 66 crafted for that block and that damage and that accuracy too. Um, Teeth of the Lords of Night is the one that I used to rock before I started rocking the Staff of the Flashing Blades, but like I said before, I think if you don't have... Uh, the Staff of the Flash or a make you do level 50 or level 61. You can buy one from the Bazaar. You can craft one from Celestia or buy one from the Crown Shop. It doesn't really matter. As long as it has decent block, it's good. And so I've, I've even seen some people use Quagga Blade, which is uh, a really good wand because it has a lot of block. and You don't really need crit at a low rank, so um, that's definitely something to go with. And it gives a death uh, dispel. So I guess if you're going up against a death, you can dispel them, like low key. Um... Before I started using the Duelist Fader Razor, I used the In-N-Out Athame that I have on my Ice, so go back back in the video and refer to that Athame. That's the Athame that I used uh, on my Myth before I uh, before I got Duelist Fader Razor. For my Ami, I use Life Mastery Amulet. It's really good for satyrs and stuff like that, heals, getting off infections uh, without wasting mass pips, so definitely use Life Mastery if you're running on a Myth. If you don't have Life Mastery on a Myth, I... I would suggest not even doing PvP on a myth, legendary at all, or or um, for any level at all, uh, except for max, because max, you know, you have to have uh, your more gammy. For a ring, I run as if it's a ring of preparation. Now, if you don't have this, this is gotten from the House of Skills. I would just run the in and out uh, ring that I have on my ice. So refer to that. That's uh, the ring that I would have used if I didn't pick this up from House of Skills, farming over and over again for my robe. Uh, my pet is double crit, double damage, double resist. Like I said before, pets don't really matter. It's your strategy that matters. So as long as you know how to use what's in your deck, you're pretty much good from first or second. Unless you get crit on or something, but that's like the RNG luck. Um, so this is my main deck setup, basically. Uh, you get your pierce for like zero pip wands, even though wands are zero pips. But pierce to get off towers, shatters to get off like tower spam. Uh, trolls are really good enchanted with bubble up uh, ninja pigs if you don't have ninja pigs and you have keeper of the flame put that in um, if you don't have keeper of the flame or ninja pigs just substitute these spots for maybe uh, more golem minions stuns bubbles uh, whatever you want basically or even talos and you want talos in your deck as well so do your spell quests but um the reason why i don't have any high hitter um spells in here like Medusa or Orthrus, I can't really get Bassy yet, but it's because I carry them in side deck. Um, that's pretty much myth strat for Legendary. Yes, you're supposed to carry all your um, your main hitters inside and power them up with blades and stuff. Even at max, you're supposed to carry your, your hits inside for myth because they clog your deck. And myth is um, half support, half damage output. So what you want to do is have all your supportive cards in main so you can pull them faster. And then when it's finally time to hit pull from side so it's easier so if you don't pull a hit in main deck and you have all your supports inside you're kind of screwed because say the enemy has like a thousand two hundred health left and all you need to kill him is um say a celestial calendar but you're not pulling any hits and you're discarding everything but you keep pulling like earthquake and cyclops and everything and you know it's not going to kill them there's a possibility of tower and they have those stun blocks on you want to be able to pull from side pull that um celestial calendar that medusa or basilisk and take the game back basically so you, you definitely want to, you know, strategize your myth up as as much as possible because uh, myth is kind of a hard class to play. It kind of took me a while to figure out, um, losing over and over again, what it took to, you know, win on a myth. So uh, this is the best way to play myth on a uh, level 60. So go ahead and copy the TC setup and the deck setup. It's really good. Incorporate it. Learn it. It's good. Be good in peeve. 
And that basically sums up the deck and gear setup for my three legendaries, or my two legendaries now. My myth is going to max, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like if maybe this deck and gear setup will benefit you in the future. If you're thinking about making a myth legend or a balanced legend or an ice legend, definitely follow in the god footsteps. Become good and peeve. Tell your friends. 1v1 your friends. Slay your friends, because they're bad. And, um, this is James giving you guys a sign off. See you guys in the next PvP video. My next video will probably be a top 8 fanmade spells. I might have Kyle in it again. Um, I actually have some interesting cards that uh, a fan sent me that he made, or she, he or she, I'm not really sure what gender you are, but, um, if you do end up watching this video, your cards are boss, and I will feature them in the top 8 fanmade spells. So, um,. Most definitely, you guys can look forward to a top 8 fanmade spells. Number 3 coming out this weekend, probably on Sunday, so watch out for that. And uh, yeah, this concludes this update video. So, half update video on my myth, half um, deck and gear setup for the classes. So, uh, drop a like, subscribe for more PvP and top 8 and gear and deck setup videos, I guess. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!